We are so glad that you let us come into your house today. And we hope you enjoyed today's show. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do some it's different things, <laughs> but you know, this is all part of love living life. So this is going to be a lot of fun today. Yeah, normally, you know, we're in the kid, our love living life kitchen here. And uh, normally we would cook or give you some ingredients and, you know, special things that we do. Today, all we want to do is talk about ingredients. Make sure that you read the ingredients, especially right. these days. But in order to do that, we're going to throw back to 1954. We thought this would be fun. We found these yes. old clips of a program called the Goldberg. And the episode we're going to look at today aired August 31st of 1954. So we're, what, 70 years later, but it's kind of interesting. They're going to talk about this. Vitamins yeah. and, um, and the exercise. working out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really fun looking back and going, hmm, this is interesting. So we like bringing some of these shows yeah. like this. Yeah. Let me give you a little background on the Goldbergs because, of course, this is way before my time. But anyway, it was a comedy drama broadcast on radio from 1929 to 1946. Then it became a television show from 1949 to 1956. And it was devised and written by the actress Gertrude Berg. She wrote it actually in 1928 and then sold the program to the radio show and it launched from there. And um, then of course she became Molly, the lead character for the Goldbergs. And this is back in the day, you know, this is this episode's from 1954. This is before they rolled commercials in and you know broke the show up and segmented right. the show. So they would actually open the show with a product placement commercial. They would just talk about the product, and that's how Molly starts this Goldberg episode. So let's take a look at Molly and her pitch for their sponsor, Ribitol. No. <laughs> so what's the difference as long as you're healthy? I don't know what it is, but it comes to counting calories, I get a mental block. Maybe because it takes too long to see results? With my Ributol, in one week, oh seven days, I feel like a new person. And I didn't find it so difficult to, to count the 22 elements in Ributol. Because Ributol was what I needed to make me feel like a person should feel. I want to ask you, is life something to pass you by? Or is life something to enjoy? It's either to be or not to be. So if that's the question, I found the answer. Ributol. So take my advice. Especially if you're tired and bedraggled with no energy. Don't you want to feel good and strong and bubbling over with life? No, of course. And, 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 and that tired feeling can be because you're not getting the 22 vital elements in Ribitol. So, so don't waste a minute because now you can try Ribitol free. Yes, free. So here's all you have to do. When you buy this bottle of, of 100 Ribitol gel you caps for the regular price of $5.95, so your drugstore will give you this bottle, the regular dollar ninety-eight cent size, absolutely free, and and for nothing. Then then see for yourself how much ributol may help. Try it for just one little week, and if you don't feel absolutely like a new person, take this bottle back to your drugstore, and he'll give you back every penny. So so it costs you nothing. Believe me, this is opportunity knocking. So open the door, open the door, and get ributol. <laughs> Open the door and get Ributol. <laughs> to be or not to yeah. be, that would be the question. So She talked about counting calories at the beginning of it. She said, you yeah. know, the, the counting calories. So 70 years ago, they were doing the same things or trying to do the same mm -hmm. things we're doing now, getting the vitamins and the minerals you need, trying to count the calories, be healthy. Now, the Goldbergs, they were a Jewish family in the Bronx. So I love they opened the show. She's leaning out of their little pad I in the Bronx that. with the bricks. And, just, and yeah, you know, classic. that was not anything different. Back then, you saw a lot of people because of, there was such a community people would lean out the window and talk to each other so it was a perfect way to introduce this product yeah, and it was her just you know, that's how they opened the show you saw at the end of that it came up with the Goldbergs that's how they yeah. opened the show but yeah she's leaning into your living room you're leaning out of the window and just explaining this product and how you get energy and pep and all these things and this is why we're saying read 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 the ingredients because Even back then there were claims made that you couldn't make and there were things in Ribitol that they actually had to, because of the claims, and there's a couple of ingredients in there. That yeah, let me, let me read you what was in it. Actually, and this is why we encourage you to read the ingredients, because there were some great things in it. It had 11 vitamins and 9 minerals, 15 times the daily minimum requirement of vitamin B A, which is which thymine. Is thymine. Three times the requirement of B2, which is riboflavin, seven other B vitamins, the daily requirement of vitamin C, nine minerals, including iron. 
So great ingredients, but so the B, the, so there was full of B complex. Yeah. So it was a great so B complex. Gave you quick energy, which they claimed, yeah. but it had one other thing that we don't really endorse. <laughs> also, it also had 12% alcohol, which is the same as wine. So that's why we say read the ingredients. You might have. Hollywood make you feel different if yeah. you took that, and we don't recommend that anyway. So <laughs> yeah, so we don't we don't endorse or condone that at all. Uh, but anyway, so it also had 12% alcohol. Uh, now, this TV show went off there in 1956. In 1962, Ributal got into a little bit of trouble um, because their claims were that it would provide pep, energy, relieve weariness, and unhappiness. So they claimed that this Ributal would, clear, would uh, clear you from your unhappiness. That's pretty much a false claim. They weren't allowed to do that. They got in trouble. So anyway, but we thought that'd be but fun to bring that forward today. This is a fun show. Yeah, this yeah. is a really... It's showing back in the 50s how people start talking about health and how to eat right and what to do to help and exercise. So we're going to actually exercise with Molly. Yes, so no, Mo well, she's not in there, is she? Yeah, so Mo yeah, Molly actually is exercising with them. So this is an episode from 1954 is Molly? <laughs> of the Goldbergs. And Molly, who is, it was actually Gertrude Berg, um, that's who was leaning out of the window, the lead character. She was going to go to this beauty school that in <laughs> also encouraged, yeah, they, they did all kinds of things at the beauty school, but one of the things they did was exercise. So we're going to go and look at Molly exercising in 1954 and watch space, pay special attention to the opening because it has one of those machines that had the, I like, call the big them a belt wiggle jiggle yeah, machine. It's, <laughs> anyway, it's just hilarious. And we're going to exercise with them. So everything they do, they have a personal trainer that instructs them. Everything that they do, you have to do at home. So this is our exercises for today. So the instructor is going to instruct us. We'll do it too. And we'll we're going to do it with, do it with them. Right. So yeah. this is the Goldbergs. This is Molly at her exercise class. <laughs> There's the machine I'm talking about. The little uh, bubbles. Yeah, I, don't I, don't know, I don't know what, what the bubbles have to do. supposed to do for you, but that's pretty classic. They do have this stationary exercise bike. Okay. Oh, yeah, they have that other roller. Massage, yeah. There's actually one lady in there that's really exercising, which is really good. All right, girls, line up for your show, Sunny. Line up. Okay, so Remember now it's my turn, instructor. Now, girls. All right, there we are, all lined up. Now we're going to do the deep knee bend and kick. Um, think of yourselves, ladies, not as women, but as ducks. A duck. We're a duck. Now, we're I'm not, I'm not a lady. Oh, so you have to stand with your duck. feet like a duck. Back Is that what it was? Yeah. And eyes front. <laughs> All right, girls, are you ready? Go. Bend and bend kick. Bend and kick. Bend and kick. Bend and kick. Like I'm going to do a full and duck. I'm just going to squat. I don't get the... I'm a duck. But you know what? You can see that this... Now, they don't work out very well. Right? They're like five or ten and they're done. They're done. What cracks me up is the sweats. They're all in those old gray sweats. You know, this is before the days of the yoga pants oh, yeah. and all the bright Stand outfits like this. You, know, yeah, you just wore the gray sweats. That was it. Oh, tummy flat, tummy flat. That's so flat, tight All stomach. Right, flat, now, flat. Now, uh, arms above the head. Arms above your head. Ready? Go. Bend and that up. Bend, bend and up. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so now funny now, because they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my I just gosh. hit you. I'm so sorry. And the shoulders over the spine. And head stretched up. This is actually really good advice. She's talking about keeping your shoulders yes. and your spine. With you Standing know, up straight. talk about this all the time. Yeah, keeping your vertebrae, getting your vertebrae lined up like little blocks. So she's up like a puppet. <laughs> I like her analogy. Imagine coming up from your puppet. Give you nice posture. Actually, that's good advice. All right, now we're going to do... The uh, jumping exercise. The jumping exercise. All right. That's all she yeah. calls it. Jumping, jumping exercise. This is, I'm going to copy one of the ladies. <laughs> I don't know. I would think of it as a jumping jump. Yeah, that's, it's just like she that. Just, that. <laughs> no, she's just, <laughs> she's just doing this. <laughs> Instead of actually. <laughs> Look, they're all exhausted. They did four done. or five, I think. Four or five. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> So we encourage you to do more than this when you work out. When you like, you know, get your blood really flowing. Okay, the last one. Be a bow and arrow. Oh. Be a bow and arrow. My favorite. 
Uh, uh, Wait, can I do it with Be a bow like, and arrow. Okay. Yeah, we'll go the same way. Be a bow and arrow. Be a bow and arrow. Be a bow and arrow. Bow and arrow. Wait, if you bend your knee, you could actually. Anyway. This actually is a really good exercise. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because you're balancing on one leg, you're stretching, you're well, reaching you, out. You could actually stand and stretch and actually bend your yeah, knee. Yeah, you can do a little one-legged squats on that. <laughs> so be a bow and arrow. <laughs> So we encourage you, you know, try all these again. You had the, the bend over squat, you had the duck and kick, you had the, you know, just good posture alignment. Um, I love the bow and arrow. Okay, so we know this is kind of funny, but this is all about, you know, exercising isn't fun anyway, and we know that, but there's a way to make it fun. This was a way for us to make it fun. So today it was just showing how they exercised back in the 50s and laughing about it, and then finding comical ways to do the same thing and follow. Yeah, most people stop exercising because it isn't fun. I mean, it really isn't a lot of fun if we came over here and just started, you know, <laughs> listing the dumbbells, doing those things. It's not a lot of fun. That is fun to look back at the 50s and just see that little jiggle machine. And, and just, that's our goal. I mean, yeah. we've done balloons and tennis balls and, I mean, my goodness, we've done... Pool noodles. Yeah, we just try to find creative ways to get you active. And that's what yeah. we're trying to do, just find something <laughs> fun, a little flashback. We call it the comedy flashback to the 50s. Some fun ways to exercise. Um, I, actually, they were very beneficial. I mean, it was good for you. I love just the outfits they wore, though. But you know what? They did do one thing that I think is really key, and that is have someone help motivate you, have someone spot you, like the stand-up. Be a and puppet. Be a, <laughs> is that what it would <laughs> yeah, be? Puppet, be a yeah, puppet. Yeah, puppet. But it's having somebody help you and make you accountable. And that's what that was. So, you know, there's a different way of being accountable today. So 1954, yeah. 70 years later, so we're still talking about read the ingredients you know, with yes. the Ributol and just exercise, get a group to exercise like they did so there's more accountability. You saw how the women were having fun and goofing off with each other and yeah, it just makes be it a bow little and more arrow. beneficial. So yeah, now you'll hear us we'll periodically just say to each other, be a bow and arrow. So <laughs> you did that the other day. You guys do at your house, yeah. Well, anyway, all right, well that's enough. Keep exercising if you want, you guys can keep being ducks, be bows and arrows throughout the rest of the show. We're done, we're gonna actually get into to some scripture. We've got a, quite a bit to actually cover today. We're going to be in Philippians uh, verse 4. So if you have your cell phone or your Bible, grab that. It's Philippians 4 and we're going to do verses 4 through 9. And Lori's actually going to read a couple different verses. But we're going to start in the NIV, Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, worthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. That's well, yeah, I just think of the Bible as an instruction book. I mean, you know, people joke about the acronym Bible as basic instructions before leaving earth. It, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. kind of fun <laughs> to have that. Um, but that's what it is. I mean, you think of a manual. It is our instructions and our manuals for life. If you have a manual for your car and your taillight goes out, you go to, you know, page, you go to the glossary, go to page 75 and see how to replace the bulb or whatever it might be. This, I mean, I love this. Can you imagine if, if you had the glossary and it said, I mean, it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, depression. It could be anxiety. It could be any of those things. You can flip in your manual. Go to this portion and it tells you, it's basic, it's simple instructions on how to overcome that, how to be a conqueror. Well, you think about, you know, Jesus gave us the, the Holy Spirit, our helper, and we have a guide, a lot. He's our guide, he's our teacher, but we also have a written guide mm -hmm. and it's, the love letter of Christ to us. So how much easier is it to take scripture and actually practice and do what the Bible says? And we have, I mean, the forefathers that went before us, I always think, of course, Paul wrote this. And I think of Paul, when we're talking about this, that very first line, rejoice in the Lord always. What did he do when he was in prison? 
He and Silas were in prison. What were they doing? Well, they were he was in prison how many different Several times? times. My he's goodness. always released, it's supernaturally <laughs> released. But anyway, he and Silas are rejoicing in prison. And what happens? The, the cell doors open. So, I mean, there's a prime example of putting this to practice and um, having the outcome. So, let's and read another teaching verse. teaching how do you focus on Christ when there's a circumstance that's going on around you? A storm, yeah. something you might come and across. Yeah, and this is, this, is, this is how. So, I'm gonna read the ERV version. I mean, we, we read lots of versions and I really enjoy it, but this one is really good. It says, always be filled with joy in the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he strengthens us and that's where the joy comes from, that strength. I will say again, say it again, be filled with joy. Let everyone see that you are gentle and kind. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need, always giving thanks for what you have. And because be you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human minds. Brothers and sisters, continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise. Think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected and do what you've learned and received from me, what I told you and what you saw in me do and the God who gives peace will be with you. I like that version. If, I do too. If, we, we love to take scripture and then break it down verse by verse, so I wanna do that just real briefly, but verse five, let everyone see that you are gentle and kind. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we call ourselves Christians, which is to be yeah. like Christ, to be a little Christ. Yeah. So, you know, people have their, what would Jesus do bracelets and things like that as reminders to, oh yeah, I shouldn't act in the flesh and do, you know, say something I shouldn't, I need to act more like Christ. That's what this line is saying. We should have that same gentleness and love for others that he has. And then we go into verse six, don't worry about anything, which a lot of them say, be anxious about nothing. If you know, you know that you know that you know, and you have that relationship with God and we know where we're gonna spend eternity, then why would you be anxious about something in this world? Because this is just temporary, we're just passing through. We're, I mean, this is just you know a, a little side tour that we're taking before we get to eternity. So why would I be anxious about anything here when I know that ultimate result is gonna be spending time with the Lord worshiping in heaven? And on top of that, when you have a relationship with the Lord, and you know how much he loves you, and you know that you can go to him about anything and everything, and he knows you, so he wants your trust, he wants the faith. I mean, it's God's looking for faith on this earth. He wants faith, it's impossible to please God without faith. So when you think about that you have a heavenly father and he hears everything that you say to him and when you know the word of God and you're praying and asking him what you know is the perfect will of God, he's hearing you. There's not anything you can't tell him or ask him, he already knows, but he's waiting for you to roll it over to him like first Peter, cast your cares. When you cast a care or you have a concern and you're talking to the Lord, he's listening. And that's exactly what this is. And Paul knew that. Paul knew that the Holy Spirit would obey him to not go somewhere and then tell him to go somewhere else. He had that relationship. The same with us, we have a relationship with the Lord. He gives us instructions of what to do, where to go, what to say. He tells us the things that we need to be hearing from here that him that renew our minds. And all of that is right here. Yeah, I love this ERV the way it says that. Don't worry about anything but pray and ask God for everything. And then here's the part I really like. Thank you. Always giving thanks yes. for what you have. Yeah. In other words, be thankful for what you have. This isn't saying, you know, go to the Lord every day with petitions and whine and complain. It's saying be right. thankful for what you have. And that's what Paul was. That's how you worship when you're in prison. That's mm -hmm. how you go before the Sanhedrin and, you know, argue your case about preaching to the Gentiles when they don't think you and should. And it's putting God in remembrance. Father God, thank you yes. that I know that you're with me, that you've said you'd never leave me and forsake me, that you said that by your stripes I am healed. All of those things, when you thank him of something that he's already given you, it's putting him in remembrance of, Lord, I know that you promised this and I'm 
thanking you for the promise you've given me. And it's renewing your mind. When you start looking at all the things the Lord has done for you, all the things that he's gonna do for you, but the things that he has done, my goodness, it takes your, it takes your mind off of the circumstance of whatever it is that you're praying about. When you focus on Jesus, you focus on the Word of God, then that little thing isn't quite as important. And I mean, we keep bringing this up, but they're in prison. They weren't praying, you know, oh Lord, get us out of these shackles. No, they were worshiping and the shackles fell off. They took their mind and their focus off of the, that storm that they were in and they just worshiped God and he delivered them from that. So I like verse seven, it yeah. says, and because you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. When mm. you renew your mind to the word of God, then that means that anything, you're overriding any emotion. So if it's the wrong thought and you renew your mind to the word, then that thought is gone. If it's worry, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's unbelief, that's wrong. But God loves us. So when you focus on him and his word, then he turns around and you still, you feel that joyful, peaceful, the peace of God, that peace that's far passer than, he's actually saying take every thought captive because what ends up happening is he overrides whatever that is and the peace of God. That peace that surpasses all understanding is there. And, and when you put him in remembrance of what he's carried you through or the things that, that he's done, it's that, it diminishes anything that you could even think about. Yeah, that earlier verse said it, you be thankful you're thankful for when he's delivered you in the past, the things he's done in the past, because he's going to do them again in the future. So you don't have to get so bogged down in what you're currently experiencing. When you look back past and go, oh, wow, I remember when the Lord did this miracle and did this and did this, and I know he's going to do it again. I, I really like this ERV version. We, we don't bring that forward a lot, but this was really good. This end of verse 7, his peace can do this far better than our human minds. Mm -hmm. So you can sit and try to reason out in your mind, okay, I need to calm down. I, I'm anxious about something. I need, I need to not be anxious. I need think purple. <laughs> that's, what? Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, try to think about something. Count to three and hold your breath or whatever, all these you know, things they came up with. That's not going to work as well as God's peace. Just having that peace, that love, knowing how much you're loved, that's what gives you the peace. Then you don't have to try to figure it out in your mind. You're in the spirit, your, your inner spirit, the Holy Spirit in you is just going to guide you in that. It's going to give you that inner peace that you can just go, Oh, you know what? The Lord's done it before. He's going to do it again. I'm not going to be anxious. He's I'm always going to fulfill His promise. This. Yes. His perfect will of, of the perfect will of God is perfect. I like that Paul is saying, brothers and sisters, continue to think about what is good and worthy of praise. He's teaching them how to renew their mind. Think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. And then he says, do what you've learned and received from me. He's imparted wisdom and knowledge to them, the things that he's gone through. He's taught them how to renew and focus on Christ. Yeah, so he's saying, these do what are, you saw in me. Do. Yeah, I'm sorry. These are the things that are opposite of worry and anxiety, which you talked about earlier. They're opposite of anything that would be foolish, anything that would be filthy. So, I mean, he's teaching them, focus on these things. And we talked about it earlier. This is the manual. So if you're having troubles with whatever it might be, like I said, foolishness or foolish talk or gossiping or any of those things, he's saying, hey, get the manual out, turn to Philippians 4, 4 through 9, it's gonna tell you what you need to focus on. And these are the things you need to focus on. Things that are good and worthy of praise, true, honorable, right, pure, beautiful, and respected. And those are the things you wanna focus on. And when you do that, if you, King James, New King James says, let your gentleness be known to all men. Mm -hmm. The Lord is at hand. When you think about the fact that you are walking filled with the love of Christ, with his wisdom and his knowledge, that's evident to people. And people are watching. There are a lot of people. People go through things every day. And what they need is to be able to see that the peace of God is rested in you and on you and that you're walking in the way of the Lord so that it helps them because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be evident. We're a walking epistle of Christ. We're supposed to be evident of the word working in our lives. And having this fruit and focusing on these yes. things. Yes. Well, let's go to the next. We've kind of been breaking it down. It's a good little, good little study. <laughs> let's go to verse nine. And, and do what you learned and received from me. 
what I told you and what you saw me do. That's what Lori was just talking about. So Paul's telling them, look, do what I instructed you on. There's an instruction manual that I gave you. Read the manual, but do what, do what you saw in me. Do the things that you saw. You didn't see me react in the flesh and do all these things contrary to the things of God. You saw that I came and, you know, he worked really hard and he supplied for himself and he did all these different things. And then, of course, he ministered to them and preached to them and taught them and built them up and, and focused them away from the idols of the world and got them to focus on the things of Christ, which are these fruits that he just talked about. So he's saying, look, do what I saw. Don't, don't go down that other path. And his promise, his promise is, and the God who gives peace will be with you. So we know that the peace of God is with us. When you focus on the word and you practice understanding and, and having that, it's like having a relationship. When you have a relationship with the Lord, then He's there and you know it. It's so evident. You can see him in everything that goes on every single day. And so, the peace of God is with you. Right, so if you have anxiety or you don't have peace, here's the page you can turn to in your manual, your instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> Go to Philippians, Philippians 4, four. 4 through 9, and it's basic instructions. Here's what you need to do. Focus on these things. Don't focus on the others, but focus on these things that are right and pure and holy and trustworthy. And then the peace of God will be with you. And this is coming from a man that knew it firsthand, that had been beaten and shipwrecked and in prison numerous and times, prison. and you know, had really been through it. He even had his own people, the Sanhedrin, trying to kill him. Forty men set up a trap in Jerusalem during Pentecost that they're going to try to, you know, kill him. Uh, so anyway, he had been through it. And so if anybody knew about the peace of God, it was Paul. And you know what? If you think about Paul and everything he taught, no matter what you read, his the most important thing was. Paul being very aware there were people that needed a savior. They needed to know who Christ was and be introduced to him and then them live for him. And it's the same today. And everybody we see or know, or if there's a family member or a friend, do something today. Call someone and ask them, do you know Jesus? Do you have the peace of God? And if you don't pray with them, and it's this prayer, Ask them to say, just pray with me, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and you shed your blood for me in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. It really is that, that, that simple. Making him the Lord of your life. Absolutely. I mean, he's called the Messiah, the Savior that came to save us. That's so. right. I allow him to work through you to help draw him to save others. You know, we always pray with you, pray with you at the very end of the program with 3 John 1, 2, which is our prayer for you as a viewer. And it's beloved, I pray or we pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you had fun with the Goldbergs. God bless you. We love you guys. <laughs> You're not supposed to take more than 1,200 calories for all three meals. Here, Mrs. Goldberg, sign here, huh? and don't waste a day. Baba. Well, please don't ask another question. You'll thank me for this. Wait until you graduate and get your diploma. Oh, Nellie, they give a diploma? Yes, of course. Oh, Nellie, that's what I always wanted. Yeah. Tell me, where, where, where do well, I sign? Right here, Mrs. Huh? Goldberg. Mm -hmm. yeah.